Hello everyone, this is Gorax and I have not realized that it's been a while since I covered the Temporal Vortex team and the changes I've made to it and I've noticed you've been asking for it in the comments under different videos so today I'll show you my timings, my equipment and things to change as well because soon we're gonna have a new hero that will replace current supports. Um, so as you can see my team is doing not too bad, 426 million damage yesterday, but I'm not spending too much time playing it, okay? As I said, this season, I'm taking a step back, relaxing, and I'm competing against a few people who got quite good inspiration on other heroes. My team still doesn't have inspiration, as I'm not about pulling heroes to inspire them. I want to have access to multiple heroes. I'd rather have new heroes than old heroes and inspire them. Uh, so I can pr prepare more teams for you. So yesterday I saved 426 million uh, damage and I didn't use Chest of Radiance as far as I am concerned. Yes, I still opted out for Snarl with Downpipe Organ as I have four range heroes in the team and he's got a lot of attack on his hands. So this is giving me more attack, more damage to my Rook. And I could see a difference. It was like... 15 million difference with pipe organ compared to chest of radiance so i stuck with it scenario is using serial set with attack percentage moonlight mantle and attack runes as well so we're boosting the attack as much as possible and the second support is ogog with horn he's using ancestral protection set to mitigate damage as he is our tank i don't have alignment moonlight mantle he's using defensive one and uh, enlightened rune and defensive uh, rune here as well and now main damage dealer is obviously rook with his rat tamer and i'm using the undead well shade of death set with precise carnage and as you can see i don't really have a good precise carnage okay this is probably the best one i have but we would uh, rather have a crit damage here however rolls on my crit rate set as well are rather low as you can see a low crit rate here and that's mainly because i'm using that glove if i had a crit damage glove i would definitely aim for more crit uh rate on the equipment here runes again not really lucky as you can see uh no even attack percentage here but triple defense and uh this one is actually decent and um, now second damage dealer is whisk and whisk is using poison of the swamp one of the best artifacts in season four and again shade of death set here with Pretty good equipment, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the stats here are really good. And crit damage gloves, as we have this Poison of the Swarm, which will give us a 30% crit rate. So we're looking at like 85% uh, crit rate here, plus huge crit damage. So yeah, he's doing a lot of damage. But the gloves here, crit damage with attack percentage, a little bit HP and resistance. But solid. If I could get a little bit more crit rate, that would be good as well. But the runes, again, crit damage, nothing really good here. These are like a waste of stats here for Rook, uh, but it's the best I have. I was really unlucky when it comes to runes, but as I said, I'm playing it a little bit more relaxed this season. And there's Dargo, okay, which is remain a player. And since I don't really have a good set, a third good set, Shade of Death, I need to use Emissary set to get high crit rate and crit damage, well... Crit rate, really, because with the Shade of Death, you need at least 200% crit damage. And I could not get it because uh, I don't have crit rate gloves here. So I'm sorry, crit damage gloves. So I'm going for crit rate gloves here to make sure I have high crit rate, at least 80%, 90%. That's what you're looking at to have good results that are not very random. And accuracy 240. Crit damage again here with a little crit rate and accuracy with crit rate but no crit damage. So as you can see more improvements to be made here. But as I said, since I am in top 20, I don't really mind, okay? I'm not gonna challenge the top 10 because those guys are huge. They all have Inspiration Rook or Whisk or uh, other heroes. I don't have that. So I know I won't be able to compete against them unless I have a perfect equipment. But then again, you guys want to see the timings. I know this is quite important. And I've been doing different timings. And this 
week these timings are the best for me so um scenario at 21 and a half and ogok at 30 and a half this allows my team to survive the whole 150 stacks and then they die because ogok is not protecting them anymore this is why once we get access to calavera she will replace ogok and uh she will work pretty well as well with the horn um whisk First, we start damage rotation with Dargo, then a few seconds later, we apply corrosion with Whisk and we finish it off with Rook. And that's pretty much it. This is a, the, These are the timings that I've been using in the Vortex. But again, this may not work for you, uh, as well as placement. Play around, move your heroes and see which one gives you the best results. Because, you know, swapping things around like this might give you even 5-10 million damage oh, because of how... Ogog's battle skill works. So it's worth trying moving your heroes around and seeing what works best for you, as this might give you bigger damage uh, increase than you would expect. And that's what's been happening with few players that I spoke of, about this um, in the past few days. So yeah, that's my team. Uh, just a quick update, basically, because I know you guys are playing Rook, at least those of you who are, are looking for the timers, as it seems like everyone else is doing more damage than you. But it's mostly due to the equipment they have and inspirations on heroes, because remember the Psychic Core, it also grants extra stats for inspired heroes. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. As always, Thank you for watching, stay safe, bye!